So I've got a lot of different types of oak, but they all have one characteristic in common. They all have a big fat tap root. Stay tuned. I've got here about 40 different oaks. They're all seedlings from just over a year ago and they all need tap rooting and repotting. You can see I've done four already, so it's quite a long way to go. I'm repotting them into these larger pots. Pretty good in this bright sunlight in the hot summer we have here in Madrid. To have a nice white pot so it reflects a lot of the uh, heat off them. So by repotting them at this early stage, I'm trying to achieve two things. One is to get rid of all of the weeds and, <laughs> and the liverwort, which uh, is not dangerous, not harmful, but it really looks ugly and it spreads really easily. So I want to get rid of the liverwort and we need to either cut off the taproot or at least prune it down and tourniquet it so that we get a higher root plane. So let's take a look at how simple it is or difficult to cut off the taproot and to keep the seedling alive. We'll start with what I'm calling an ideal seedling, where you have the taproot and you have fine roots growing radially all the way around about one point. Now in this circumstance, it really is simple because you can cut off the taproot and leave all the fine roots. However, in real life, seedlings are rarely that simple and especially oak seedlings, which are notorious for shooting down a massive taproot with feeder roots spaced randomly all the way down the taproot, which is great for a healthy tree in nature, but not great for bonsai. Now in this circumstance, what happens if we just chop off that taproot? Well, we leave very few fine roots and there's a good chance that seedling won't survive till the end of spring. Now let's rewind and have a look at a different method which uses a tourniquet to restrict the growth of the taproot below a certain point. Now a tourniquet is just a metal wire wrapped around and tied, but not tightly so it's not immediately cutting off the flow of sap between the taproot and the main stem. Now this method encourages new root growth above the tourniquet, a bit like an air layer would, but with the difference that you're still getting the nutrients from the lower down roots. And at this point we can choose to chop off some part of the taproot knowing we're going to do more the following year. Then over the course of this year you're going to get a bunch of lovely fine roots above the level of the tourniquet. Then a year or two later you can remove the remainder of the taproot leaving your seedling perfect for a future bonsai. Most of these are actually Pyrenean oaks from the north of Spain or I should say Pyrenees oaks because it sounds better. But these lot over here are English oaks or common oaks or royal oaks, however you say them. And you can see already that the English oaks actually grow quite a lot faster. They, they were all planted from acorns at the same time, about a year and a half ago. And one more piece of interest here. This is a, a Pyrenees oak. And it seems to be doing quite a bit better than most of the rest of the Pyrenees oaks. And what's different about this one is I planted it in 100% vermiculite and it's just grown really beautifully. I, I love it. The, the leaves are so healthy and beautiful and green. Whereas some of the others that I potted in mainly just potting soil and it shows me potting soil is not good even for seedlings. We should be using good draining bonsai soil or perlite or vermiculite. Anything that allows good drainage and allows the oxygen to get to the roots so that they can grow better. This one here is a, an English oak, so we'll see what it looks like on the inside. Very quick and easy repotting you can actually see underneath the taproot has come out the bottom and actually grown back in again. So because I know I'm going to be cutting the taproots, I can actually literally just cut this one off. And it's springtime, plant isn't going to suffer at all. So let's have a look inside here. It's a mix of soil we've got in this one. You can still see the old acorn here. It's not necessary anymore. There's the kernel of the acorn, the core. For the first year, the acorn still provides nutrition for the plant. So you don't need 
to fertilise the whole of the first year really. But by this year the acorn's not doing much, it's just rotting away and uh, yeah of course this year I will need to fertilise a couple of months after repotting. Now I'm going to try and do a close up of what this root ball looks like. You get very woody twisty roots. So you can see the tap root here has got quite enormous and that might on some trees be an interesting bit of movement but really I don't think it's suitable for this kind of oak tree. So I'm going to cut it off. I need to leave some fine roots and deal with it a bit better next year. That root's not doing any good so I'm going to cut it off just here. And then hopefully we'll get more fine roots just around here we want actually the root plane. We may put a tourniquet just here so we develop more roots just above the tourniquet. So here's an example of a tap root that has got done exactly what we don't want to do, which is it's grown down, curved round, and then all the fine roots are coming from the tap root and not actually from the main stem, which is where we'd want it somewhere. So the way we'll deal with that is to put a tourniquet around here. For now, I'll just cut off probably just the, the biggest tap root, which is here. Leave the rest of the fine roots so that it'll carry on growing fine during this year and next year, but with the tourniquet here. So let's just get a piece of wire and tourniquet that round. So you don't have to twist it very tightly, there shouldn't be a gap, but it's just tight enough so that as this tap root starts to fatten, it's going to force a lot of fine roots to come out. And then that is where my future roots, my future nabari will come out, just above the tourniquet. two years, check the roots again. So there we go, the difference between granular soil and dense potting soil, you can't compare. See there's fine roots here, it's just developed so much better, much more healthy leaves, 